but don't you worry, we're getting it started. All right, Rodolfo. And let's see here. I want you to be full screen. So, there we go. Okay. Oh, no, that's not. We're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> Don't you just love it? It's kind of like live television. Anything that can happen will happen. So if you will forgive me, um, I know you can see the full screen, but we can't. So I'm just going to work on this for Rodolfo um, and get this all going. Just a moment. Here we go. All right. Here's Rodolfo. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rodolfo Martinez Fuentes. I'm the bilingual program coordinator from WINS Foundation. Uh, I want to present this uh, information about WINS, WINS Foundation. I know the title is different. Maybe you <laughs> may be confused about this uh, presentation and the title about the webinar. But <clears throat> the purpose is the same because I want to <clears throat> let you know, everybody know, why I am involved in this <clears throat> in this field? Uh, the Wins Foundation mission is <clears throat> works to the break to the circle to the healing and <clears throat> wants to discharge sexual abuse by provi <clears throat> provision, education, advocacy, support, and other survivors, loved ones, providers, and community. Basically, WINS is working with the survivors for when survivors for child sexual abuse. Uh, I've been working with this uh, in this field for the last uh, 18 years. My first job to work in the United States here is, is like a case manager to HIV people living with HIV and uh, infected or affected, and also with the families. For the last uh, uh, 15 years, 17 years, I've been working in the community. My concern is to work in this community because at the beginning <clears throat> with the HIV, a lot of people they have confusion about HIV. And <clears throat> the people they need education. And also I was <clears throat> working with the more, with the uh, Spanish speakers population. And they don't speak English and they don't understand about what's going on with the HIV. A lot of people are scaring with this information. And we need, we need at, the, at that moment, working very hard to people educated with the HIV because a lot of people, they don't want, like, <laughs> uh, take medication, take medical care, and provide more information. That was my concern. My passion working in this community because uh, to provide information, to provide support, and for the the clients, families, partners, uh, kids, everyone. Uh, a little more information about my background is I am social worker in Mexico. Uh, I was graduated in 1985 like social worker, and also I got my <clears throat> bachelor's here in the United States and business administration. But at the same time, I've been working for nonprofit organizations and for the last 17 years here in, in Colorado, basically. <clears throat> From uh, Wins Foundation vision is everyone we have to resources they need to speak about here from the try beyond the child sexual abuse trauma. I think that this is very important uh, why I am involved in this field because a lot of people they don't want to talk about it. By se uh, sexual abuse and everybody don't want to talk about it. But basically with the Latino community is more like a ma machismo is like my, my machismo and they say they never happened to me. That's why they, they never want to talk about it. When I start working in this uh, field, this I see many situations with the men basically. And the women when they have some restrictions, men and boys and with the uh, domestic violence, sexual abuse for the women. 
I was working in different organizations and some of those organizations, uh, they don't want to em involve in the, with the women working in the, in the field or working with them because uh, my, I, theoretically I can say I can fight with my supervisor, the director of the organizations to uh, engage in the support groups with women because my director, my, my director was working, they say it's, it's not possible, any possibility, one man coming and join to the support groups or working with the support groups, uh, women's domestic violence or sexual abuses. And I, I say we can try, the first times I can try, is you can see the, any results or you can, if the people they don't like it, well, we, I can stop with the working with them. When I start working with this group, my first group, at the beginning the women, they have a lot of expectations because, I'm surprised because they never been men working in the support groups. When I give the another, another vision, another uh, opinion, one or another uh, helper, because always and with the women, they have one stigma or a stereotype with the men because they they survivors for domestic violence. When I give you the vision or the opinion or what I think, what the men thinking about it, domestic violence, and we have a long conversation with these groups and the women they enjoy. And they like it, and they, and they start to ask more questions because this is another another perspective for the men because they li always receive the same perspective with the women, and they give it the opinion what are the men thinking or what. But when the men they give it the <coughs> the opinion for the men, what is the vision the men? What happened? what is the mentality with the men, the women, they start like a, a lot of questions. And they enjoy and they like it. And they, all those women they're asking, they, they need to come in again to the support groups, to working, to, to provide more information. And I give it the response because a lot of women ask questions, personal questions, um, about sexuality, about the relationship, and I give it the, the, the truth. I give it maybe not, <clears throat> I not give it a wrong or <clears throat> a beautiful answer. I give it the, the reality information. The Wayne's Foundation, they say, is whatever good for you, do it. Because the <clears throat> Wayne's Foundation right now, they're working <clears throat> with the people, survivors, men and women. <clears throat> I was surprised when I started working in this organization, surprised when they, I found some men, they have it, that uh, they looking more information or help for child sexual abuse. Because, like I say, it's the machismo, or I don't want to talk about it because it's not happened to me. It's more easy the women they can express the situation, or or when maybe we can understand, or we see everybody is is more happy with the women having these situations. But the men have uh, those situations. Domestic violence for men or show sexual abuse men and they start to talk about it because I I always say is you never ought to look in to the healing for healings because this is a big situation the men they can find in the healing and they start to have a problem with the relationship uh, for this uh, uh, a presentation, training, or presentations. I think so we can understand more about the dynamic for child sexual abuse, signs, symptoms, or along to the lifespan, including the, how impacted the child victims and adult survivors 
tra trauma in uh, informant. The key opportunity for inter intervention, critical lives, common barriers the victim and survivors face to the lives at the stage. This is more Im uh, impacted to me that can uh, help to the community because uh, at the beginning a lot of people can, the stereotypes they can understand this I've been working only with the men but my case loss is more with the women's because I I was taking my trainings to work with the, the healthy relationship with uh, any situations and the women's I think so that I found that they prefer the men's provide more information and that the reality they can understand the men mentality. The benefits of specialty services for adults, individuals, therapy, group support. Uh, like I mentioned before, wins is working with the provide support groups for those people survivors for child sexual abuse. Uh, <clears throat> my experiences is working in the community is provide more respect for those community, for those people they have any issues, <clears throat> whatever say is uh, domestic violence, child sexual abuse, any issues that people they have we need to uh, understand and provide the respect for those people. And the people uh, always, they can, uh, at the beginning, they can refuse to uh, disclose the situation. After my first uh, group, my first uh, speakers with them, after that, the people they can open, they disclose everything. And I know in the community, I provide different resources in the community. It depends the situation, provide free services or the people they're able to pay. I can refer to those services. But the key working in the community with those people is respect everything that people they can say. Maybe you can start to make it one of the questions is how the, the men that have been working, all the men that can work in, I can say not all the men because the, the men they need to have, they have um, uh, more information about the services and also they need to have uh, the same feelings with the people, not the, the same situations. They, the the men they need to support they need, they have, the, the men they need to have information to support the, those community. And also the men they need to be honest with the people <clears throat> and they need to take the, this kind of job because now only for receiving one pay, want the pay because they need to, uh, dedication to working in this, this community. When we're working with the, those people, we are always asking about uh, how they feel to, to support or survivors about child sexual abuse, domestic violence, any issues. We ask some sometimes for definition. What is their definitions? What are they thinking? What are they they can survive? It? And I like I, I can say before, uh, we need to be honest with those people. We never change the behaviors, but we can modify the behaviors, or we can give them more uh, information about their definitions about those issues. Uh, sometimes we have some definition by the internet, the dictionary, the books, those definitions, theoretically. But uh, those people, they have their own definitions. And we need to respect the, the, their definitions. 
but we can extend it more uh, to the their people they can find the problems about the problem they they still happen. And this is the statistics from uh, child sexual abuse. Uh, it is incredible that one in four girls is the sexual abuse before uh, they turn the 18 years. Only the 80 percent, uh, someone else they know either relatives or acquaintances. And one in six boys is sexual abuse before 18 years. For me, this uh, I was thinking this happened only with the with the girls or women. This not happening in in, in, in in men or little boys. But this is a statistic is they made me uh, concerned about what is with those people. Where is where they are the those men in the community? Why is they they don't look for help, support? And maybe that's what happened. They still happen the situation to have uh, the same problems when they are right now is the fathers, and, and right now they still happen with the domestic violence. What happened with this those men? What happened with those girls? Why the the men's not involved? To, to support, to healing those, those women. The 5 to 10 percent of the child sexual abuse cases are even reported to the police. Only the 5 to 10, the 90 percent of the victims of child sexual abuse become adults who never receive the specialized services they need and they have the rights. <laughs> And the ninety percent of the victims, the uh, is they never know. They can looking for support or they can receive it, the specialty services. This is why I am involved in this community, in this field, in the community, because what happened? They still work, They still happen in the community. They still happen. The broken the relationship or still having the domestic violence, or they still doing domestic violence. That is my concern. That's what I am involved in the community. When I, I start in this information or this uh, webinar, I mentioned I want, I mean, I start working with the HIV. The HIV, they give me the opportunity or they open me the, the doors to look in different situations in the community because a lot of people with HIV, they infected because from their partners, because the partners they have promiscuous uh, situations, domestic violence, or they feel sad, or they feel uh, uh, abused, or they res they not respect themselves because they ha they have those, some issues in the, in the, in the family on their relationship. And this is my when I start looking more information to provide different services. That's why I want to involve I was involved with with the domestic violence because they happen a lot. The men infected with HIV and because they had domestic violence and the women they they say they I need to I need to tolerate tolerance. My, my husband, my partner, because they do everything for me. And I'll give you the information. It's not true. The men does not provide everything because the women, they can do everything for themselves. And I give the uh, examples. I give you some resources. I give you some information. And the women, they start to look to recognize the powers. When the women they receive it, those information for the men, they feel more powerful because they <laughs> they feel like somebody else recognizes some powers in them. What is that the problems? 
the adverse childhood experiences, this has happened everywhere. When they still happen with the domestic violence or child sexual abuse, at the end is the the people some people decided to suicide because they they can find another the healing, they can find another support because a lot of people think it is this is my my life and I need to I need to stay here with my rest of my life. And some people they can continue with this and they decide suicide. I have one experience with a <laughs> one woman from El Salvador. I I'm glad to have those experiences working with different cultures from Mexico, Central America, South America, Native American communities. And this <laughs> provides me a lot of information, a lot of experiences to understand those cultures because when the people say, oh, the people speak Spanish, uh, some people say, oh, Mexican, because they speak Spanish. And some people from Central America and South America, they now feel comfortable to say, are you Mexican? They feel angry. And they feel, uh, uh, they don't want to bat to working with a, like a case manager because they <laughs> compare it or identify Mexican. And they don't like Mexicans. But we need to understand what is those cultures. What is they understand for them. And uh, I'm glad to have those uh, information. And I understand. I know it's in different uh, countries, the cultures, the, the uh, information about what are they thinking. And uh, the wish to find the information about in the brain, but I have the experiences working with them. And this is very important to understand different cultures, different countries, different language. It's the same in Spanish, but it's different language at the same time. Health implications, psychological consequences, the, like I mentioned before, the people that feel guilty, shame, self-blame, grief, depression, risk, society, and PTSD, dissociative identity disorder, sexuality issues, difficult regulation, affectivity states, addiction, drug, alcohol, food, maybe pornography. This has happened in all, all situations because when I start to work in, in this community, a lot of people I found those uh, psychological consequences in all those people. Some people have a disorder, sexuality, some people they have addiction, some people have feel guilty, shame. <clears throat> a lot of people say it's only the women they feel guilty when they have passed for the domestic violence. No, the men feel guilty and shamed also because they, what happened in the brain? I don't know. We need to find it. And there's uh, the opportunity to talk in, um, with those people, men and women. How we can talk with them, how they can disclose these situations, respect, understand everything they say. And this is uh, information we need to know to uh, work in very well in this community. Physical consequences. Chronic medical condition, including migraines, gastrointestinal disorders, fibromyalgia, trauma problems, cognitive difficulties, persistent around the state, impervigilences. It's the same. It's, the auto situations affect the psychological, physical, and the relationship consequences. Again, we need to understand and respect those people everything says. Because sometimes the people, when I listen to those people, this make me laugh, but I need to be quiet and understand those people. Because if we understand and we and listen to those people, the people they can disclose and we can get more information and the true information because sometimes the people they liar. If they don't, uh, feel comfortable with those people, case manager, 
víctima advocate, uh, <coughs> compañeras, the people they not open and they say not the true, all the information is not the true. And we need to see all those uh, consequences and we can find it in those people, men and women. A lot of women is, <coughs> is they have addictions with the alcohol, drugs, or food. And they ne never re <coughs> have that really, they never related what about the situation they still happen in their life and their relationship. And again, when those people has uh, some issues in their life, they can be re-victimizations. Victims for child sexual abuse are two to three times more to be re-victimization re by intimate partners, domestic violence, and other uh, sexual assaults. This is the, the, the circle. They still happen because of the people they thinking this is the, the life that they, the God they give it, that this life. And they need to tolerance. That's why we need to start to work with them, to give them more information. And also they are also more likely to have multiple sexual partners. This happened men and women. And when we mentioned about multiple sexual partners, it's a lot of women who have this, this, this can happen increases to expose to STDs and also reproductive health issues become mothers younger strongly to find the health the relationship giving birth can be triggering postpartum depression issues this is how those uh, symptoms or consequences that people they can have Again, the men one <coughs> working in this field, they need to understand all those uh, things. Because if the men not working or not understand those things, they cannot work in the community in this field. Maybe some, a lot of men say they need to work in because they need money. But they need to have the passion to work in the community. If they don't have passion to work in to support or help the community and not the situations, they never have the goals or they need to support or <coughs> work into healing and those people. The most survivors had trouble to connect into the present challenges to child sexual abuse experiences as children, survivors may or maybe not have in the, uh, the memory to the abuse, may have trouble considering what happened, what is sexual abuse, may they don't know that child sexual abuse is a crime. The spe specialized services are hard to find, mostly with the Spanish speakers because <clears throat> It is hard to have it uh, interpreted with the specialized services like uh, counseling, therapy, because the, uh, the interpreter, they now interpret the feelings. And, this, uh, and the professional, they can understand in the middle with the interpreter. Right now, we've, we have a lot of people, they bilingual, professional bilinguals and they provide those services. That's, uh, that's why we want to share this information. The people they can understand and they can have the choose to continue and to look at more professional services. This is the circle with the, uh, I mentioned before about uh, any issues, not only the sexual assault, sexual abuse, domestic violence. This is the same circle the people they steal. The men is working with this uh, community, or with these uh, clients or these people. They need to understand this circle. 
is very important the means in one would involve and working in this to understand what happened and to understand and go, and they have to know what happened with all those issues domestic violence sexual assault sexual abuse what is the services they can provide what is the sin symptoms or what is the consequence the people they still have uh, also they have barriers a lot of women a lot of men they have barriers because they silence like I say if they not feel comfortable to talk with a professional worker they silence they never talk a stigma what is the stigma <clears throat> like I mentioned we need to understand the, the culture every culture we need to understand and to accept it because we don't have to discuss about those cultures if they speak Spanish and some Spanish is not agree with my beliefs it's not working with me it's working with them we need to uh, put away my beliefs because we need to work it we need to support we need to give it the information victim and blaming denial denial <clears throat> this happened very often most uh, women the way when you asking the youth victim for some sexual abuse or domestic violence they say no why because they need to feel comfortable with the worker with the case manager with the advocate if they not feel comfortable or they not trust with the, those uh, worker they denial intrafamilial abuse this happened very often or they start those situation in the family all those barriers we need to find with the when we have those conversations with the people one by one but again we need to respect and the people they need to trust this co-worker this was my, my opportunity with wins we provide these services and <clears throat> this is uh, my my door we can look and for provide different resources for those community and also the means they need to have this information what is the resources they the means they know to working with this community with this feeling with the with this population they need <clears throat> information about what is the resources in the community and then when this is this is my thought because this is a the people are coming to looking for some services or help or healing i have those uh, informations i have those uh, resources to provide for those people they they need it. this is a um, continue the uh, information that wins have uh, about resources about uh, professional people we we have in the wins <clears throat> wins the focus more on the therapist uh, counseling about child sexual abuse but at the same times they come in different or many issues because i mentioned before is they have some situation before uh, when the the people was the child it's a lot of issues coming if they never looking for a specialized services they not heal it and the people they never all to looking for healing and they need to know right now wins has around 28 support groups in colorado we have support for all genders, loved ones, Spanish speakers, men, women, and LGBTQ. <clears throat> the men they never the groups I'm sorry, the groups they never mix men and women. Because you know you can understand about when if they have uh, child sexual abuse, they can be men with women 
and reverse, women with men. We have a support group for men, for women, and also the Spanish speaking loved ones. And also we have different types of groups, creativity writing, speak out, creativity arts, animal assistance support skills, keynote workshops, trauma sensitive yoga. This is the different groups we provide. Okay, all those services we need to know to provide information. Maybe you can see right now why the men and how the men they can be involved to working in this field. If they have information, they have the resource the resources about the different services. This is easy. Last week I had some interview and one organization at the same with this information about this. And I say here in United States for me it's easy working in the community because I'm from Mexico. When I start working there <laughs> to work in, in the same fields like here to provide information to domestic violence and uh, drugs users, child sexual abuse, Mexico they don't have the same organizations we have here, the services we have here. I can say here I can take the telephones and make it some calls to pro to give the resources. In Mexico, I was practical fight to the uh, governments, local government, state government, and federal government to look in services for some people they have some of those situations because they don't have it. And also free services. WINS provide all those information free. Mexico, they don't have those free services. Central America, they don't have those free services. Colombia, Peru, uh, Venezuela, they don't have those free services. They need to fight to look at those a little things to provide for those people they have it, those, those situations. It's very hard over there to work in. Always I say, here is easy. I love working here because the services is here. If you had the telephone book, you can find uh, all those services. If you have some resources, and uh, the list of resources in the community, just make a call. And it's easy to connect with those people. Maybe this happened <coughs> to me working more easily because the services is still there. Only it's make a call and connect with those people with them. And maybe sometimes I need to introduce personal with a, a, an organization is that make an appointment, it does it. But <clears throat> Mexico, Central America, South America, we can do this. We need to fight to work to looking for one services for one people. And maybe they, and sometimes the people they not feel comfortable, like I mentioned, they don't trust those people. And here is a lot of people working with the passions, with the dedications and the work in the community. That's <clears throat> people that sometimes more easy to work in is you provide passions, dedication, and the, your clients, they can see those qualities in you, it's easy working with them because you can provide <laughs> resources, you can provide more information, and you can listen to them. I know it's very hard to uh, listen and for a long time because basically for the Latino community, they like to talk about it. When they feel comfortable and they trust, they talk many stories and you need to stop because you need to continue working you need to uh, work with the database, working with another clients, everything. But this is part of the education we need to provide. How we can work with each client, how we can give their, uh, the time to each client. I can say, okay, we have a one, one appointment for one hour, two hours, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever you, you can work in.
um, Queens has those uh, professionals, uh, facilitators for the groups, all the facilitators for the groups if they are professional. I can say dance groups is not therapy group, it's a support group only. When they want to receive the another and the therapy, we need to give them another resources or another referral. And also, uh, in these organizations, uh, we work with the education and our risk. Again, uh, here is easy to do in this because everything is in the community. A lot of people looking for some services. Or a lot of people, they, uh, they listen to other people about your organization, about your job, about your experiences, about your services. Everything is there. And also, you need to provide your own philosophy to work in the community. I know all the organizations that have their own philosophy, but at the same time, you need to provide your own philosophy. What is your philosophy to work with the people? What is, is you a man? What is your philosophy working with women? What is your philosophy to working with men to men? Is you a woman? What is your philosophy to work with the men with child sexual abuse? With domestic violence what is your philosophy to work with women is you a woman how you can support you can understand because you both is women no maybe not because it's different you need to provide your own philosophy to have a great results the queens uh, they provide those services and the support groups are the therapist facilitators, survivors driving via handbook topics. Again, what is you, how you can support yourself to working with those people? You have a handbook, you have a, your resources list. You need to prepare to working with those people. What is your experiences working with the, in the community? What is your background? You have evidence because sometimes the people they need listen some experiences, evidence about how you can support those, how you can heal it with uh, those people you've been working. And also at the same time, this is the model for Ian Wins Foundation. Intake orientations. Uh, it's necessary for you, the people they need to make a referral. If you're working with the Latino community, the people they don't want to talk about it with another people because they want to, they never know whose people know about the situation. Or maybe the people they don't like to, to know other people, what happened with their family. This is part that you need to respect those people. You need to start to uh, provide this information. This is confidential information. This is uh, only between you and me. And the men, they need to emphasize about these uh, points. Not talk about it. Emphasize uh, confidentiality. It's private information. Uh, uh, is you provide uh, support groups, where, how they're working. And this is uh, information, uh, orientation for your clients, for your own community, how you work in it with them. If the men involved in this field, they need to emphasize many times the people they can understand that everything they say is confidential. And also, what is the U.S. structure about the group? about your organization, about you working with them. You need to make it your own one structure. And the men they need to have this structure, how they can work with them. Because this is easy way the, the community or the clients, they can work with the men. Again, <clears throat> the men they need to have the passion to work with the community. 
and uh, the passion, information, education about how they can help the people. And how they, you can work with this. It's opening, introductions, announcements, the rules, how you can work with them. If you have working with the support groups, this is your structure, or you you need to put this as uh, structure points, or you need to add this more, or it's different. Different cultures, they have maybe different uh, points, different topics. But you need to make it those rules, structures in the group, structure and you, how you work with the people. When the, and the, the adult survivors seek help, this has happened uh, everywhere. Domestic violence, child sexual abuse survivors, they look for help when the perpetrator has, has passed away. Or when, <coughs> when they feel too far from the, those people. When this happened very often here in the United States, when the people coming from Mexico, Central America, South America, they look as, they feel comfortable to talk about this situation because the, the perpetrator is not here or the <coughs> victimizer is not here and that's why they're looking for services. But <coughs> they don't, the people, they don't need to wait they happen in this situation. They, they can still look and help. If they have those situations, if they still happen, they, they need to know they can look for support or help. This has happened with the WINS Foundation right now. Maybe you can say it's this is presentation from WINS. Not necessarily it's not presentation from WINS. This is my support to provide information why the men they can be involved in this field. And this is my uh, the structure of the topics we can so I can support to, to explain you what can happen working men with these uh, survivors, domestic violence survivors, child sexual abuse survivors and loved ones. Because domestic violence the the victims is not only the men or the women. They are the child. The children, uh, they are the victims because they see everything. And what happens when they, they grow up? They, they take the same model to, so, uh, to be a uh, survivors, to be at uh, the victim or victimized. This has happened in WINS. 100% uh, of the beliefs in WINS support groups are valuable to the healing process. The better understand of the trauma and affected, 90% is better able to function daily life, and the 90% is better able to see boundaries. We found this information when we, we make the surveys and with the members of the support groups. Human rights and social justice. What is the human rights here in the United States? The people uh, understand how to, you can uh, provide this information. How you can talk about it with this information with your clients. What do we do with this? Become trauma informed, recognize the signs, symptoms, child sexual abuse and ways unresolved, child sexual abuse trauma, present children and adults lives. The people they need to know, the information is here because when you're working with the Latino community, like I say, and those countries, they don't have those, the services we have here. And maybe they, when it's here, they never know we had those services. And we need to provoke, 
Drupal Mall, all services for those people, they can uh, look in those services or looking for help. What do we do with this? The right idea will fly. We change the world. This is the opportunity men, women, they can change the world. We, <laughs> we have the creativity to do any new or any information they pro we can provide which is <clears throat> for support those people. This is the part that you can, uh, if you want to have any questions, let me know, I can answer. I want to provide my information <clears throat> about wins. Here is my <clears throat> information for Winston Win Foundation. This is the phone number. My extension is 108. And also, my email is rodolfo, R-O-D-O-L-O, -O, at winsfound.org. This is the way you can uh, send me any questions or you can call me to any questions you have. And I really appreciate your time to uh, listen to this information. And thank you for that. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't talked in a minute. My throat was kind of clogged up. <laughs> Thank you, Rodolfo. Um, I hope that y'all were able to take something away from that. Um, you know, talking about the way that Wings works and talking about the way that Rodolfo does his work as a man, uh, I think is really important. And so I hope y'all were able to take um, something away from that. Uh, please fill out the uh, uh, survey at the end of the webinar. We, we definitely always want to hear back from you all. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, if you have any questions to Rodolfo, um, his contact information is still up on the screen, but I will also include that in the follow-up email. Um, we don't have any June webinars on the books yet, but keep an eye out. We'll be sending information out about that, um, and we'll be up at our conference June 5th through the 8th. Um, so if you're joining us for that, we hope to see you. Um, we are having our membership meeting on Sunday the 5th. Um, so if you're getting up to the conference early, we hope that you'll join us for that. Um, and you can learn more about what's going on at CICASA. Thank you so much, Rodolfo, thank for you. being here. We really, really appreciate that. Thank you for your time. Thank yes, you so much. thank you. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.